Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. It is another glorious autumn day. It's clear blue skies, the sun is out, it's really beautiful. And it's been the perfect day to do some work in the garden. So I was already quite active in the morning. But then in the afternoon, I decided like, oh, it's so nice. I just want to go to Gdańsk Old Town just to sit there with a coffee and go to my favorite cafe and have like some of my favorite coconut cookies. So this is what I did. And now I'm back in the garden. I'm like, oh, it's still so nice and beautiful. So I want to do one more video and share one perennial that I really want to recommend to you guys today and Alfie's with me actually like when I'm sitting here on the lawn she thinks I'm gonna play with her and I'm kind of like doing it a little bit with her now and earlier today she was digging like hell so the entire bottom half of her was completely black so I had the joy of washing her but now she's fresh and nice and she smells good and ooh, that was good right girl yeah that was good so what I want to talk about with you guys today is one of my favorite perennials and I just want to recommend it to you because I think it's a little undervalued and a lot of people don't really know about that perennial and you can see it already in my back in the brand new perennial border that I planted up earlier this year. So I want to talk about Bistorta with you guys today. So this is it. This is how it looks like. And when it comes to Bistorta, they're all different kind of varieties. So if you just Google or check your local garden center, you will see that they come in different varieties and also colors. So I grow three different varieties and all with like red blossoms. Like this has a cherry red blossom. The other that I'm growing have more like an orange red blossom. They come in kinds of pink as well, like a light pink, really bright pink, and also in white. So this is generally the color range that we are talking about. In terms of growing habit, they grow into kind of like a dome shape. First, they start with the leaves and the leaves come up really early in the year, which is beautiful because when most of your perennials are still kind of like sleeping, you get to see the first leaves and then they start growing pretty fast. So especially in the early month of the year, you have this beautiful dome shape leaves basically in your borders that the bestorto creates. One of the biggest advantages for me when it comes to Bistorita is the incredible long flowering season. So I just checked it quickly again online because I ordered these online actually. And they say that they flower from July until October, but actually they flower even longer, depending on where you garden and how your frost conditions are. Um, they can flower extremely long. Like I remember last year, ours were flowering up until the first frost and that was pretty much and November, early December, I would say. So we are talking about a flowering season of five months, which is incredibly long for any kind of perennial. When you think about most of the perennials like phlox, for example, which is beautiful, but they flower around six weeks, maybe a little longer, and that's it. And then you're just left with the greenery or with basically just like the old brownish kind of flower hats that are just drying off and forming seeds. And a lot of perennials is beautiful, but I think it is nice to always have this proper color in your border. And for a lot of times when you want to have that, you choose annuals. But with annuals, it's like I like annuals and I do it as well. But you need to, you either grow annuals by your seeds, you do it yourself. And then you need to be passionate about it, have the time for it, you need to have the space for it. Or you buy the annuals basically already in modules in your garden center. And then it's always like a new investment. So I tend to grow more perennials because I kind of see the value in them a little more because you buy it once, they come back every year and eventually they grow bigger and better each year. So this is why I think Pistorita is in general a really, really beautiful perennial to grow and you can really put it in different areas off your border basically because this variety is called JS Kalor or Kalor depending on where you're from. So C-A-L-O-R, this is how you write it. And um, it grows about like 60, maybe 70 centimeters tall, which is perfect for me here. Um, there are also varieties that grow taller, like up to a meter and 10 centimeters roughly. But then you really count like the flower heads basically. So most of the time, those taller varieties, you will see like they get like really long stems and kind of like this airy texture on the top of it basically. But this variety stays a little more compact and that makes it perfect for the front of a border because you have this beautiful compact dome shape. And if you remember, I planted all of these earlier this year. So this is the growth of just one season. And when I planted them, they came in these tiny plugs and I thought, okay, I follow the spacing exactly how I should do it. And I don't think that they are gonna look really lush or full or anything this year. And I was just blown away by what they were doing. So this is definitely a variety. If you're a novice gardener with Pistorita, 
try and get this variety because I guarantee it makes you very, very happy because it's so beautiful in its growing habit. Um, I just quickly want to show you how the leaves are looking like. So basically, hey Alfie, this is not for you to eat. No, this is a leaf. So the leaves are kind of like a little spiky towards the end and have a really nice lush green uh, color. They are not like fleshy or anything, so they are actually kind of like a nice texture. And as the temperatures go down, the leaves will change color into like a yellow tone for most varieties or the varieties that I know of at least. Um, what I want to do now is show you two other varieties that I'm growing that I actually grew already for four or five years, I think, in a different location of the garden. Um, because they perform quite different to this bestorta here. And I think that I will pretty much take them out and yeah, change them basically into this variety here, into JS Carlo, because I think it is just so much better and nicer. So just follow me to the other side. So basically we just flip around because this is like the back of a garden. And now you got to see the island bed in the mid section of the garden. So here I'm sitting in front of the island bed and this is an area where we have semi-shade basically because we got some shade during the day from the walnut tree and the cherry tree that is actually over there. So this is a variety which is called Taurus. In this area I grow two different varieties. One is called Taurus and the other one is called Firetail. And according to my research, Taurus came out of Firetail. So to me, to be honest, they look exactly the same. I can't tell any difference. Same height, same growing habit, same color on the flowers, everything. But what you can see quite well is, and if you remember the first variety that I showed you, it was looking lush and green, had a beautiful growing habit, was still full on flower. And this is Taurus basically. So you can tell I started staking it because it was flopping over. Already in August, it was almost lying flat. So I needed to come in with stakes quite early. The leaves already start to kind of bronze off actually. So they have a little bit of their autumn coloring, but mainly they are kind of like starting to brown off, which is not beautiful. And they kind of stop flowering for most of the parts. So I never deadhead them. Of course, I never, I don't go in here with these kind of like spiky little flowers. I would not deadhead them. Um, and I haven't done it with the other variety with the JS Kalo one, but here you can clearly tell that they don't continue flowering for as long. Basically, they still have a little bit of uh, color here and there, but not as great and not as good as the other variety. So honestly, this is a quite old variety. Um, I did a research on like um, the Firetail one is apparently more than 100 years old. It also has a different name that I couldn't remember now, but I think I'm really going to replace them. I'm not sure if I'm really going to keep them. I thought maybe I put them down at the bottom layer of a slope and maybe let them do their thing because in general in summer they are quite nice for cuttings for flower arrangements because they come, the flowers come, try and show you now one, can't really, on quite long stems actually. So the stems are really long and then you have the flowers on top of it which makes them quite nice for flower arrangements but in a border I'm not a huge fan of staking things to death or kind of like trying to manipulate things. For me it's kind of like the perennials need to hold upright for themselves and we are in a windy condition here. This doesn't sometimes help. We're on top of a dike so the wind really hits us hard but in, then even more so I need to have like plants that can just uh, grow strong and do their thing well. Last thing I just want to talk about basically are the growing conditions, soil conditions and the temperature zone for Bistorta in general because they're all kind of similar-ish. So Bistorta in general is very, very hardy. It is a zone five, which means it can take temperatures down to minus 28 degrees, which is a lot. So we ne pretty much never get it here. And I can tell they always come back very strong and very happy and healthy. In terms of soil, they are not very fuzzy. They can cope with a lot of conditions, but what they don't like is to dry out. So Bistorta is not ideal when you plant it, for example, next to any Mediterranean plants like not a great neighbor combination with like lavender or even bearded iris are like so so I would say. So they work really well for me with asters or with helenium for example because they kind of like similar growing conditions. So they want to have a nice fresh and a just not a too moist but just like a nice fresh soil basically. They grow really well in full sun, but also in semi-shade. So they would also grow where your clematis, for example, would grow. They'd be very happy next to that. And I've seen them growing in conditions like that, really next to shrubs or even to trees. At least they shouldn't be like in double shade or anything. So really make sure that they still have a good amount of sun during the day. 
And I think that is pretty much it for today's video. It's something completely different to what I normally do because normally I always take you on these things of like putting th something up or starting a new border and planting things or maybe clearing things up and all those kind of things, talking about future plans. Uh, plans. So I think today is something interesting as well. At least I hope it is. Just tell me what you think about it. Do you like it when I give you recommendations based on what I grow in my garden and what I'm happy with and confident with and does it help you as well? So just drop me a message. I'd be very happy to read your comments. Until then, hope you enjoyed today's video and I would love to welcome you very soon in my garden again. Till then, take care. Bye. Are you hungry? Are you eating a flower? Girl, you're eating a flower? Eating a flower? No. Mm -hmm. You want an apple? Mm. Or a carrot? I think you would like to have a little bit of a carrot, right? Yeah. Mm. Come on, we go inside. You get something to eat now. Yes.